And when you want a simple supper, herbs are perfect to use in your cooking. They add vibrancy and an amazing depth of flavor. And once you get the hang of them, they are so quick and simple to use. And one woman who really knows these chef's best friends is expert herb grower, Lorraine Melton. I love herbs. I love the way you can cook with them. I love the smell of them. She's been growing an incredible array of herbs in the wet Cambridgeshire countryside for over 20 years and can smell a bay from a basil at 50 paces. We grow about 150 varieties of herbs. It's always interesting to grow new varieties, see what they taste like, see what they smell like. It gets a bit addictive after a while. Broadly speaking, you get harder herbs and softer herbs. Softer herbs are things like parsley, basil, rocket, coriander. We grow um, two main types of parsley. We've got flat leaf parsley and curly parsley. Flavour-wise, I think they're very similar, although a lot of people would say that the flat leaf parsley has got a stronger, more aromatic flavour. This is your common basil, sweet Genovese. This is um, a purple variety called Reuben. We do Greek basil, Thai basil, holy basil. When you're looking for a basil, you want a bright, fresh basil, nice leaves, no blemishes, and nice, strong stems. It's got a lot of oils in it, and it's very strong smelling. It just tastes of summer basil. Lorraine certainly knows her stuff, and she's right. Soft herbs are delicate, so for maximum flavor, always use them at the end of cooking, or simply add as they are to cold dishes. Here are my top five soft herbs that I could never live without. Basil, as Lorraine said, it comes in many types, all with an amazing sweet pungent flavor. Great blitzed in pestos, sprinkled whole over mozzarella, and showing its versatility, it even makes a wonderful ice cream. Parsley, beautifully earthy and intensely fresh. Use both the leaves and the stem for great depth of flavor in savory dressing, soups, and salads. Coriander. For an amazing hint of citrus, often used in Thai dishes, coriander is perfect in curries and chutneys, but it bruises easily, so treat it with care. Tarragon, a staple of French cooking. This has long, soft green leaves and a distinct antseed flavor, great with chicken or in rich, creamy sauces. Finally, chervil. Both mild and sweet, a perfect pairing with fish, and incredible mix simply with melted butter for a quick sauce. Those are my favorite soft herbs. What about the hard ones? The harder ones tend to be um, a more woody plant. Things like thyme, rosemary. So you've got your common thyme, which is your ordinary, general, bog-standard cooking thyme. And then you've got things like lemon thyme. We do an orange thyme, which is actually one of my favourites. It smells like thyme, but it's got a deep, sort of musky scent as well, which is just going to give you a slightly different flavour in your dish. Hard herbs, like thyme, can take more intense cooking than soft herbs, so they're great in stews, roasts, or pan frying. Choose the right one, and you can add wonderful depth of flavor to your dishes. Here are my top five I use day in and day out. Rosemary, amazingly robust with great bittersweet green leaves. It's a classic paired with lamb, delicious sprinkled over speciality breads like focaccia, or great as toppings for fruity sorbets. Lorraine's favorite, thyme. A heady, aromatic, pungent herb which adds delicious flavor to a Sunday roast. It's amazing with wild mushrooms and is perfect in marinades. Oregano, warm and full of delicious aromatic oils. A staple of great Italian dishes and perfect sprinkled on pizzas or in pasta sauces. Sage, a strong tasting herb with a deliciously bitter flavor, incredible in stuffings and with rich meats like pork or duck. Finally, bay, bittersweet and spicy. It's delicious simmered in soups, stocks and risottos, and just as good dried or fresh. Growing herbs is a lot easier than people think it is. On window boxes, in balconies, and it's great. You can just open your window, put your hand out and snip some off. When you're out looking for herbs, make sure they look nice and healthy, no blemishes, stems look strong. They should just spring back, so nice springy sort of herbs. Smell, obviously, is quite important. Not all things smell, but obviously, if you think it's one that's going to smell like lemon thyme, it should have a nice, fresh lemon scent. And obviously, the final one is taste. You can tip a bit off and taste your herbs, and you can see what they taste like then. Whether bought from a supermarket or picked from your window box, herbs are a great way to add fresh flavors to your dishes. Perfect for delicious, simple suppers. I love this recipe. Why? Because it turns this humble ingredient, a can of tuna, into something delicious. Just open up and drain the tuna into a sieve. Just slightly flake that. Don't press it too hard, otherwise you'll dry out the tuna. Now, these are water chestnuts. 
Just slice them nice and thin. You can buy them anywhere, any supermarket. Chestnuts in. Fresh ginger. Get rid of that rough skin on the outside. By grating the ginger, you get to get all that really nice sort of juice in. Take your spring onions and just slice on an angle. I like the texture of the water chestnut with a spring onion. A touch of fresh coriander. Lovely. Next, remove the seeds from a chili to reduce its heat without losing any flavor and finely chop. Chilies in. Kaffir lime leaves. Roll them up nice and tight. Run your knife down the center once and just chop. And that makes the fish cake nice and fragrant. Touch of salt, touch of pepper. Fish sauce. Just lightly season the tuna to bind all those wonderful ingredients. Two whole eggs. And give that a nice little whisk. And then add your eggs. Get your hands in there and start mixing. Mm. Get the mixture, roll it from hand to hand with the palm, pat them down nicely. To cook, add a little groundnut oil to a hot pan. At the face of a clock, we're going to go from 12 all the way around. First one in. These fish cakes only take a few minutes to cook, so keeping track of the order they go in the pan means you know which one to turn first. Give the pan a nice, gentle little shake. Make sure that nothing's sticking to the bottom. Spatula, two fingers on top, turn them over. Beautiful. That crackling noise is something you always want because the tuna's already cooked, so we're just lightly frying them to get the nice crisp outside and gently take them out. They smell incredible. Let them sit there. We're going to make a really nice, delicious, simple dipping sauce. Start off a little pinch of sugar. Fish sauce, two tablespoons. That gives it the saltiness. One tablespoon of rice wine vinegar and some fresh lime juice. Squeeze all that lime in there. Your fresh coriander. Lots of coriander and in. Give that a little mix. And then you have the most amazing spicy tuna fish cakes. Who would have thought something as delicious as that can come out of a can? A simple supper in minutes that's so mouth-wateringly easy and delicious, you're guaranteed to cook it again and again.